Good morning. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Sheely. Sorry for the delay. I was, I'd forgotten to start up the teleconference so the people online could join us. So it started up now and we're all worshiping together from not only this location, but from potentially across the world, but most likely from Montezuma County. <laughs> Uh, thank you for joining us today. We'll be focused not only on Jesus today and his role as our Savior, but also Jesus, the prophet promised from God from long ago. Let us rise as we sing our opening hymn, hymn number 583, God Has Spoken by His Prophets. And if you're joining us online, you can find the bulletin by going through the website or checking your church email if you're on the email list. Let us sing. Divine Service Setting 4 will be uh, printed for you in your bulletin, beginning in the middle of page 3. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Therefore, you are here. 
since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us say together Psalm 111, spoken responsibly, verse by verse. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart and the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. so many dangers, 
that, our, that in our frailty we cannot stand upright, grant strength and protection to, to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. Good morning. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. The Lord your God will raise you up. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said. Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire in the Lord when I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. And I will put my word in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words, that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who begins to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or he or he speaks from the name of the God, that same prophet shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. The epistle lesson this morning is from First Corinthians chapter eight, verses one to thirteen. Concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. His knowledge puffs up, but love fills up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence, and that there is no God but one. For although there may may be so-called gods in heaven and on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, Yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association of God, idols, eat food as rarely offered to an idol, and their conscience <laughs> is defiled. Who will not commend us to God? We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak to eat food offered to idols? And so by your knowledge, this good person is true story. The brother for whom Christ died. So, Shining against your brothers and wounding their conscience when they decree you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes your brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand and sing together the Hallelujah in verse. Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching, and they were astonished at his teaching. 
And he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. Immediately there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed. So they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching and with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere, throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We join together in saying the Nicene Creed, printed on the middle of page 7 of your bulletin. When someone asks what you believe, you can respond by saying, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for our sin and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and a solid church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, hymn 810, O God of God, O Light of Light.
Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, prophets, priests, and kings, Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, Emmanuel, God with us, the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God, <laughs> our Savior. Jesus is all of these and many, many more titles and offices that Scripture attributes to him. Each of these precious names tells us of something special about Jesus that we need him to be. All of these for us. In our text today from Deuteronomy, chapter 18, Moses focuses on one of these rich titles, prophet. Now Moses had been the God's great prophet to Israel for the past 40 years. He'd done exactly what a prophet was to do, deliver God's word to the people. God's word to leave Egypt. God's word to cross the Red Sea. God's word of the Ten Commandments. God's word that he would be faithful to them in all these years in the wilderness, even when they were unfaithful to him. And now, God's word to enter the promised land, and also now, as Moses would soon die, God's word that the job of prophet was to be far from finished. So God tells Moses to tell the people that he would someday give them another prophet like Moses. It would turn out, of course, that he would be a far greater prophet than Moses. The prophet would be far greater than just a mere prophet. He would be our Savior. God promised to raise up a prophet like Moses. And he truly did so. And in doing so, he raised up a Savior for you. Our text reads, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. Christ, who is the word of God, does what a prophet does. He speaks the word of God. He fulfills this prophecy and the prophecy that's been given about him throughout all the prophets spoken of by Moses. When Jesus speaks, all the world is affected. Yet even demons are affected. Our gospel shows us this perfectly. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. Mark 1, 23-26 Christ is the ultimate prophet. He speaks with absolute and divine authority. Therefore, when Christ speaks, he speaks on behalf of his Father, and he speaks the Father's will. <coughs> In the Garden of Gethsemane, Christ prayed that the cup of wrath would be taken from him. Yet he also prayed that the will of the Father would be done. And the will of the Father was done. And the cup did not pass from Jesus. Instead of passing from Jesus, the cup of wrath was poured out on him. When he spoke on the cross his last words, all divine authority was behind in those words. Even in his dying breath, Father, forgive them, and it is finished. In Jesus' death, we find the fulfillment of the law of God and the full force of the law on Jesus. 
for us. In this act, the death and resurrection of Jesus, we attain the gospel. This is our great inheritance. Christ, as prophet, speaks this inheritance to you in your baptism. In baptism, we are forgiven. Holy baptism is not law, a work that we offer to God. No, it is gospel, a work God does for us. And by this work, He gives us the forgiveness of sins. Baptism isn't just a promise or a declaration of yourself to God. No, instead, that's what we call confirmation. Instead, baptism is God's confirmation and promise of Himself to you. God will never take back those baptismal words. You are my child. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. Isaiah 40, verse 8. Or as the hymn writer Martin Franzman puts it, Christ's strong word bespeaks us righteous. Why was baptism necessary? Romans 8, 7, 8 says, For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Furthermore, when words just sick or injured or blind with sin, we were dead in our sin. Paul says in Ephesians 2, Our and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Ephesians 2, 1 to 2. This isn't some sort of innate natural knowledge. No. We need a prophet to tell us that. We need a prophet to tell us so that upon hearing it, we will also realize we need a Savior. One who can take our place. One who does the will of God. We need a Savior who can keep the law of Moses perfectly on our behalf. Yet, for one to fulfill the law on our behalf, he would have to be perfect. And also, one of us in human flesh and blood. Where we could, where could we find a man amidst Israel? God spoke to Moses and told him that he would raise up a brother from their midst. The Lion of David, the shoot of Jesse's tree, Adonai, risen from our midst. Why else do you think we put the word Emmanuel on our altar during Advent and Christmas? The words that God spoke to Moses were fulfilled when God raised up Jesus, our brother, from our midst. Jesus, the very Word of God, could not have been our Savior if He didn't become one of us. What He did not assume, He did not redeem. If Jesus was not fully human, if Jesus is not fully human, but only divine, then He couldn't be our substitute. Just like the opposite is true as well. If he wasn't God, he could not save us. Therefore, we cling to this sacred mystery, confessing that Jesus is true God and true man. Ironically enough, when we get to Ash Wednesday on February 17th, this idea is part of the focus that we'll be putting on for the season of Lent. The divine unity of Jesus, true God and true man. Well, it'll be part of our focus because we'll be going through a book called Behold the Man as we study what that means for us. In fact, parts of our sanctuary focus on this very fact. The reason we have two candles sitting on the altar for the Lord's Supper is to remind us of God's true man and true God in Jesus. The Apostle John says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, 
John 1, verse 14. It's this word of Christ as Savior that he continues to speak to us in the Holy Scriptures. And Martin Luther's classic hymn, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word, emphasizes how essential this word is to Christ's ongoing work. As he says, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Curb those who by deceit or sword would wrest the kingdom from your son and bring to naught all he has done. Yet, <clears throat> when we confess the creed, just a moment ago, we confessed that we admitted that even this great good news of Christ, we can't believe on our own. When we said the words, I believe in the Holy Spirit, we confessed that we could not come to Christ. As Luther puts it in his explanation of these words, I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In the creed, we're admitting that the Holy Spirit brings us into faith with Jesus, and that he keeps us in the faith. To us, the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit, applies both law, that we would be convicted of our sins, and the gospel, that the forgiveness of Christ is ours. And where there is forgiveness of sins, there is eternal life in Christ. Fortunately, with the word of Christ always comes the Holy Spirit who calls us and gives us the faith to cling to salvation. Thus we sing further with Luther, O comforter of priceless worth, send peace and unity on earth, support us in our final strife, and lead us out of death to life. Against all opposition in this world, the Church of Christ stands firm by the power of the Holy Spirit who gives us what we need most. By the word of Christ, he preserves us in the very faith that he gives to us. For this, we must be deeply thankful. And we pray that the Holy Spirit would keep us and increase our faith daily. God promised a prophet like Moses. And he truly did that very thing. And yet, in doing this, he raised up a Savior for you. When God speaks, the world changes. When Christ speaks, the ears of demons perk up and they are forced to obey. When Christ speaks his final words from the cross, it's finished. Our redemption is accomplished, and we are forgiven. When Christ speaks your name in baptism, you become a Christian with faith. And the Holy Spirit keeps us in the faith as Christ speaks to us in his word, in the liturgy, in the sermon, and in the bread and wine, in the body and blood at this altar. God raised the great prophet Christ from the midst of our brothers as he is true man. Christ perfectly kept the law for our sake as he is true God. Christ speaks with the authority given to him by the Father as our Savior. Christ takes that authority to the cross and dies for us. And even now, Christ, the prophet promised from long ago, speaks with this same authority, saying, You are my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
We now worship God with our tithes and offerings. And if you didn't get a chance to put something in the offering plate as you entered, um, there will still be some offering plates there as you exit as well. But we stand now as we sing our offertory hymn 955, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful. <laughs> Grant us. 
us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Boldly and confidently we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, but thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn, hymn 814, O oh, bless the Lord my soul. spoken of by Moses, but even more than a prophet, he is our Savior. He speaks God's prophetic words into our lives. In his name you have been baptized. In his body and blood you have been strengthened. You are sons and daughters of God, forgiven, free, and most of all, with the hope of salvation and life everlasting. Amen. We do have several announcements today. The first, though, is simply, if you like these flowers behind me, please sign up so we can keep having flowers behind me. Uh, there's not someone signed up, I think, until mid-February. So please keep signing up, uh, allow the flowers to continue, and make Diana's job of picking up the flowers a lot simpler, right? Uh, 
We also have Bible study today at 1045. Uh, we'll be doing that online through the teleconference tool. And so please join us there. We'll continue our study on 1 Corinthians. We're getting into some uh, fun meat of the material now. And so if you haven't joined us yet, please join us so that you can uh, enjoy some of that. Um, coming up this week, uh, I will be out of the office uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Um, I'll be doing a pastor's conference with the new pastors. It's the Powell group is what they call it. Uh, so I'll be doing that uh, over on the front range, actually. And then on Wednesday evening, we do have an elders meeting at uh, 6 p.m. And there will also be prayer group Wednesday morning at 7.30 a.m. Um, the prayer group's always happy to have more people join. So please uh, take the opportunity to do what you can to pray for not only those in your life, but the community and our church and preschool. Any other announcements? Yes. Hello, church family. <laughs> uh, this, I'm a little nervous. This uh, is the first time that I've ever been asked to serve on a Lutheran church board, uh, per se, if I'm saying it right, for missions and social concerns. And I have a few ideas, but I have to form a committee. I'm looking at you for guidance. <laughs> and I need to just ask any of you that would like to help me with that endeavor. We have a short time before March comes along, and I have to present those ideas. So if you have places that are on your heart that God has given you that we need to help in the community. Um, I know of a few. I'm, I've only been in Cortez four years, but I do know of a few. So if you'd like to, look me up. <laughs> okay? Yes? That's why I want you to know George Green passed away. Okay. Yeah. We prayed for her the past couple of weeks, yeah. yeah. Any other announcements? If not, I will join you as we exit. Am I what? Well, I guess we could do it this week. Yeah. So Eden's birthday is on Friday, uh, February 5th. Uh, and she would love it if we'd sing happy birthday to her. <laughs>